Hi, welcome to my channel, The Magic of Math. Today, my lesson is on graphing exponential functions. Our objective today is that you will identify and evaluate exponential functions and be able to graph an exponential function. I want you thinking about today, what characteristics does the graph of an exponential function have? So by now you've graphed linear functions and talked about transformations and hopefully absolute value functions. So I want you to start thinking about, you know about characteristics such as y-intercepts and domain and range of a function. So we're going to apply all of those characteristics to exponential functions today. The parent function of an exponential function is y equals base b to the exponent x, where the base b must always be greater than zero. So in an exponential function, the base is never negative. So when we're graphing the graph of an exponential function that's not in the parent form is y equals factor a multiplied by base b to an exponent of x. So what makes an exponential function an exponential function is that the variable x is the exponent. So the parent function a is 1. So think of that back when you did linear functions, y equals x was a linear function. So they had a slope of 1. And anything other than that is a transformation of that parent function. The same goes for an exponential function y equals invisible 1 here, b to the x, is the parent function. Any other exponential function is a transformation of this function. So once a is here, if it's something other than 1, then it's a vertical stretch if a is greater than 1, and it's a vertical shrink if a is between 0 and 1. We talk about this being 0 and 1 because we talk about the factor being a vertical stretch or shrink by the absolute value of a, okay? The y-intercept of your graph of an exponential function is a. So for the parent function, it's going to have a y-intercept of one. For every other function, whatever the value of a is, tells you the y-intercept, okay? Um, when a is less than zero, so when a is negative, then it's a reflection in the x-axis. So you can see how this blue exponential function, a, is going to be greater than 0. If a is less than 0, so this factor before the base, whatever is being multiplied to the b times x, if it's negative, is reflected in the x-axis. Okay, And we have when the base b is a fraction, so think of it that way, when it's between 0 and 1, then it flips the other way. It starts high on the left and approaches the x-axis. And when a is less than 0, when a is negative, then it reflects down over the x-axis. Okay, So remembering that these exponential functions do not cross the x-axis. So in this blue one here, let's look at this. It's going to approach in the negative fashion. It's going to approach 0, um, but never touch. It's going to get really, really, really close exponentially close, but it's never going to cross the x-axis. Even when it's reflected over, it's going to approach the x-axis, but it's never going to cross. Same thing over here when b is fraction. It's going to approach the x-axis and get very, very, very small and continue to get small, but will never get to zero. It will get close to zero, but never get to zero. It will never cross. All right, here are the steps to graphing an exponential function. Number one, you want to identify and plot the y-intercept because that is so easy to do. Here, I'll go back to this other slide. Remembering that the y-intercept of the graph is a, so whatever the factor is that comes before the power, before the base and the exponent, that's your y-intercept. So for the parent function, it's 1. But any other value, if a is your y-intercept, okay? So you want to identify and plot that because that's the easiest point to identify. We'll also bring in another connection when I graph one for you with the y-intercept. Second step, you want to make a table of values. Hopefully you did this back when you learned to graph a line, and I will also model this for you. 
Then you want to plot the ordered pairs from your table of values, and you want to draw a smooth curve through your points. All right, here we go. So we have this function, 4 times 2 to the exponent x. We are going to graph this function, and we are going to compare the graph to the graph of the parent function. So we're going to describe the transformation. And then we also are going to describe the domain and range of this function. So the first thing we're going to do is identify the y-intercept. Here's a connection I want you to make. When you were graphing a line, the y-intercept always had an x-coordinate of 0. That holds true for an exponential function. So if you evaluate this function for x being 0, 2 to the 0, any power to a 0, is 1. 4 times 1 is 4. So we know that our y-intercept is 4. So 0, 4, and we graph the point. And then we're going to evaluate all these others. You can pick any numbers you want in the table. I've just picked these. So when you find the value of 1, you're going to get that that's 8. 2 to the first is 2 times 4 is 8. Evaluate for negative 1. 2 to the negative 1 is 1 half. 4 times 1 half is 2. Graph that point. 2 to the negative 2 is 1 over 2 squared, which is 1 fourth. 4 times 1 fourth is 1. Plot that point. Negative 2, 1. Then evaluate for negative 3, and you're going to get that y is 1 half, negative 3, 1 half. Now you could keep going, and it's just going to keep getting smaller and smaller and smaller. So now we're going to draw our smooth curve in, and that's plenty of points. It's actually more than you probably need. You want to know how fast it's increasing and how slowly it's approaching here. So once you've got a few points in um, on either side of your y-intercept, I only have one on the right because I can see that it's steeply rising over here. So now I'm going to go to the next slide so we can describe the transformation. So again, this is our graph, and it is a vertical stretch by a factor of 4. That tells me that it's increasing by a factor of 4. So the parent function will always have a y-intercept of 1. Look at this, times 4. There we go. There's your factor of 4. The domain is all real numbers, so that means all your x, all your inputs, can be any real number. And the range is all real numbers greater than 0. Okay, the y value will never be less than zero. It will never be equal to zero. So this is greater than zero because all of my range values are going to be above the x-axis. Okay, let's try another one. Let's try it when our base is a fraction. So again, I'm going to model graphing this and we're going to then describe the transformation and the domain and range. So I'm going to start off by identifying that the y-intercept is negative 1. So remember, there's an invisible 1 here. My base is 1 half. My a factor here is 1. And right now it's negative 1 because there's that negative sign there. So I graph my y-intercept. I evaluate for 1, so it's negative 1 half. I evaluate for negative 1, which this is the reciprocal of that. So 1 half to the negative 1 is 2 times this negative 1 here would make it negative 2. Negative 2 would give me a negative 4 output. x is negative 3. y will be negative 8. And we're going to draw in our smooth curve. So when we go to describe this graph, it is a reflection in the x-axis. You can see that it's flipped over the x-axis. The domain is still all real numbers. Any value for x will work in this function. And the range, all my y values, are y less than 0. y will never equal 0. It will never touch that x-axis. It will always be less than 0. All right, your turn. I would like you to graph this function and compare it, describe the transformation and the domain and range. Please pause and come back and hit play when you're ready to check your work. Welcome back. Let's see how you did. So you could have made a different table of values, but I used the same one I had been using before and graphed. And here we go. My values, you can check yours. 
So my y-intercept was negative 2. See my a value when x is 0. 4 to the 0 is 1 times negative 2 is negative 2. Plug in 1. 4 to the first is 4 times negative 2 is negative 8. And then plug in negative 1. You get negative 1 half negative 2. So you can see my points are big. These dots are big, but it's getting closer and closer and closer to the x-axis. Draw in your smooth curve. So to describe the transformation, the graph is a vertical stretch by a factor of 2. It's a reflection in the x-axis because a is negative. The domain is all real numbers, and the range is all real numbers such that y is less than 0. All right, I'd like you to try another one. Go ahead and pause the video, graph, describe the transformation, the domain, and the range. Come back and hit play when you're ready to check your work. Welcome back. Let's see how you did. So we're going to first graph our y-intercept, which is 2. So when x is 0, that will give 1 fourth to the 0 is 1 times 2 is 2. So my y-intercept is 2. And now this time I went more to the positive because it was just getting larger and larger and I didn't want to make my graph any bigger. So when I evaluate for negative 1, 1 fourth to the negative 1 is the reciprocal. So it's 4. 2 times 4 is 8. So I didn't want to keep going with negative 2, negative 3 because I know it was going to be way off my graph. So instead I switched my table to go to 1. 1 fourth to the first is 1 fourth. 2 times 1 fourth is 1 half. So I can see that it's getting closer and closer to the x-axis going in the positive direction. I draw in my smooth curve and I'm ready to describe the transformation. So this graph is a vertical stretch by a factor of 2. The domain is all real numbers and the range is all real numbers y greater than 0. Reminding you that this line, the smooth curve, will never go below the x-axis. That's graphing exponential functions. I hope you enjoyed the lesson today. Please subscribe to my channel and get the notifications for new videos posted. And give me a thumbs up. Please come back for future lessons. Have a great day.